G'day ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. So I know a lot of you have been asking where the hell have I been. Currently because of Christmas and New Year's, I've been absolutely raped with hours at work. So I've been so busy, plus with the house. Now I've got some time and I'm just gonna smash the cars out and get as much content out. So this video is pretty much gonna be me just going over the cars and telling you what I've been doing, what's gonna happen to them, you know, future plans, all that kind of stuff. Now I'm also working on a new camera and mic setup. So I'm gonna be running an external mic. Thanks to my mate at uh, Automotive Carnage, DJ. He's given me some ideas for new mic setup. I hate touching the GoPro and the noise it makes when you handle it. So I'm trying to get some new setups going. So I wanna try and talk to you guys in front of the camera now instead of uh, holding it all the time. But when I hold it, I gotta be dead still because GoPros hate the handling noise. As soon as you move, they just make the most wretched fucking sound. So yeah, so I have been busy, but I haven't forgotten about the channel. Don't worry. I mean, it's only been two weeks, but I try to get a video out every week. I do apologize if there's any wind noise or construction noise. There's a lot going on around here at the moment. First, we'll start with the cars around this area. I got more out the back. Plus, I still got another three at my mum's place. So I'll go over them and talk about what our plans are gonna be with those cars as well. Hopefully, the audio, audio picks me up well. It's very windy. So without further ado, I'll take up the tripod. We'll go for a walk around and I'll show you what I've been up to as well as what we're gonna be doing in the next few months and this year. We'll start with the cars out in the street because uh, it's very windy out here so I'll try and keep this uh, as short and sweet as possible. So you guys will know my 1995 EF. This is my daily. This is what I drive every day now. It has been a phenomenal car. It's all stock at the moment. So we actually, uh, yesterday we just put brand new tyres on it. So she's got new rubbers all around now. And I like the beefy sort of sidewalls on it. It looks really good. Uh, we put standard springs in the back to raise it up because it was chopped. And uh, literally got to get a roadworthy for it. So a buddy of mine stole my roadworthy for me. And then once you roadie it, I'm going to slam it back down, put an exhaust system on it, tint the windows, maybe manual convert it. And I'm gonna do like the red pinstripe around it and all that stuff and just clean it up a bit. It's a really nice car, really clean car. It drives amazing and I absolutely love this thing. So this is just a daily for now. <laughs> so who knows, plans might change. Maybe a Barra Turbo, who knows? <laughs> might have to talk to Rex about that, but yeah, uh, that'll probably be the plans. Stay in tune for that and hopefully that's the route we're gonna go with this beast. So coming up my driveway, my 99 XL or Sexel. We'll get the Sexel sticker here, thanks to my buddy Tommy. So, unfortunately, this thing has sort of left the chat. <laughs> I was driving home from work a few weeks ago. Oh, actually, it's probably about a month ago. I was driving the freeway and it just sort of cut power and started backfiring through the intake and, and the airbox and that. And it was uh, not happy. But um, I've unplugged every cylinder and it hasn't dropped a cylinder. But as soon as you put it in drive, it likes to like drop a cylinder. It's really weird. So I think it's maybe a TPS or something that's gone wrong. Hopefully, it hasn't skipped anything on the timing timing belt or anything. But uh, she's sort of dead for now. If you guys watch my Q&A, uh, we're definitely going to be turning this into a circuit car a full race car so it'll be like a uh, XR racing series car but for now she's just sort of sitting here doing nothing still runs and drives I move it around still registered yeah I haven't really had any uh, time to sort of fix it or any motivation <laughs> but we'll definitely pick her up very very soon now a car you don't really see on the channel very often is my partner's 99 GC8 now this is a manual uh, GC8 RX uh, so this is all-wheel drive uh, two liter NA and uh, this car has been phenomenal. The paint is absolutely gone, but this car mechanically is mint. We're probably gonna be looking at a new car soon uh, for her, and we're probably gonna turn this into something, whether it's just a nice streeter or a rally car, something along those lines. But it is still a good little car, and uh, I've got WX bonnet and uh, skirts and stuff like that at home at my mum's house. I've got a full WX exhaust for it. Uh, so we're gonna just clean it up, paint it, make it look nice, and just, yeah, probably make it a weekend to put it on Club Bridge maybe, and yeah, have a nice little run around, and probably do some maybe rallies or events or something in it. Maybe a WX motor swap. Maybe EJ20 Turbo, who knows? So let me know in the comments if you're keen for this little thing. It's it's pretty cool. All right, so coming into the garage, we have these three beautiful cars here. So a lot of you have been asking about this car. <laughs> so what are we gonna be doing with this car? So I haven't been driving it much, honestly. It's just been stuck here in, the, in this little hidey hole, just sort of vibing. I haven't driven it in a, probably a couple, oh, nearly a month now, I'd say. But I haven't really been doing much to it at all. I haven't really had any reason to drive it. Just sort of been, yeah, it's just been chilling here. I've ummed and art about doing some more events in it just to get it out and enjoying it. So I might do that very soon. I've still got some like stockies of brand new tires on them that I can uh, shred at the track. So wouldn't mind doing a track day in it soon again, as much as, you know, I don't want to, but I miss drifting it. And that's the whole reason I built this car. Uh, the biggest thing I want to do to it is obviously all our turbo stuff. So we have most of the turbo stuff for it. I'm still trying to find some little bits and pieces. And then once we have everything, I'm just going to spend a weekend on it and just do a nice budget turbo setup. Go get it tuned and just enjoy it for now. It runs and drives, turns the key, and she's happy. But I will definitely drive it soon, just to brush the cobwebs off her. But yeah, she's literally, I started it, I think, two days ago, and it just kicked it in the guts, and straight away, she fires. So, can't beat the old Betsy. And over here, we have my prize possession, <laughs> which is the channel name in itself. This is my 180. So, if you're not familiar with it, it's an SR20, uh, forged SR20 turbo. 
uh, T28 ball bearing turbo on it or stuff like that. This car is just turnkey and drive. It is so fun to drive. I love it. I um, haven't really been doing much to it. Um, take it out here and there, just sort of drive it. I need to get some new tires for her um, because these are just Chinese tires and every time I do a mountain run, they just screech and that. They're not actually bald. They're just, I just want new tires for it. Uh, plans for this car. I want to do a nice kit on it. I want to do a... Um, Type X kit on the sides with the wing, uh, and then uh, I've got a vented carbon bonnet at home at my other house for it. Uh, so I want to paint out the body color and have a nice vented bonnet, uh, some nice big wheels, and just have it a nice cruiser, just like it is now, but having a, a bit more aggressive. It's looked like this for nearly 10 years now. I've uh, wanted to actually change it up a bit for a long time. So hopefully we'll start ordering bits and pieces for it soon, and then that'll give me a kick in the ass to sort of just make this car look a bit more mean. But it does look pretty sick the way she is now. I love this thing. <laughs> but let me know if you want to see more of this on the channel. I don't really do many videos on it because I just sort of drive it and I've already done the work. I built it years and years ago with my dad. So uh, if you want to see more, let me know. And now to this machine over here. So I've actually been doing a lot to this car off camera. I haven't really filmed much on it because when I get home from work, sometimes I just like come in the garage and tinker on it. I usually get home from work at like one or two in the morning. So in that case, like it's not no use filming at night time. It's a bit crappy. So we have put a new turbo on it. If you follow along, you probably know that I blew my old turbo. This has had a standard R33 uh, turbo on it and it had an RB20 actuator. So it was running 10 PSI. Now it was a stock turbo for a stock 25 DET. This is an RB25 DET, of course. And we ended up blowing it at Broadford Raceway. Uh, we did about 46 or 47 laps. And on the th like last three laps, the turbo just went, it was just whining. And it didn't say he's up, but she was whining and carrying on. So I had a turbo for the 31 I bought ages ago. It was just like a, a 3076 Chinese turbo. And I had it sitting there and I thought, bugger it, let's put it on this car and see how it goes. It's all installed, ready to go. I'm gonna do a video on it and see how it is. Uh, the dose sounds so good. Uh, I've got a nice dose pipe on it now. Um, it's just running 7 PSI at the moment, so it's nothing crazy, but it does feel nice and responsive. Uh, once we get her a bit pepped up a little bit, we'll give her a tune and we'll open her up and uh, put some more PSI, put some injectors through her, stuff like that. Running really good now, so I took it out to our car meet last week and it went really well. It actually burnt out a coil pack, so I replaced the coil pack. Now, they were the brand new ones Max Speeding gave me, so wasn't too impressed with those. So I went back to uh, the standard and been fine. If you want to see more videos on this, let me know. Now remember guys, if you want to see a video on any specific car, just let me know in the comments. Now there are some cars that aren't here at the moment, so I will go through them a little bit later in this video. Now coming out to the backyard, we have these beasts here. These are my marketplace little pit bikes that I've been tinkering with in my spare time. Uh, this one, actually, this is an older one on my channel. If you go back ages and ages ago, nearly when I started, I did a video on this. Uh, it was a $150 marketplace bike or something like that, and uh, will it run? So we made it run. Carby was buggered, put a new Carby on it for like $18, and the thing is mint. <laughs> put a new, uh, new tube on the back because the tube was busted and I ride this thing everywhere, put BMX handlebars on it and this thing's awesome. This is a 90, 90 cc, just a Chinese 90, um, sequential four speed. It's a little little beast, this thing, I love it. I've actually ridden this so much over the last few years. So this one here is just an Atomic 125. Uh, it actually has a full lighting kit on it. Front headlight, rear tail light, it's got brake light and everything on it, it's got a horn. I actually swapped an RC car I had for this on Marketplace and I got a bit of cash my way as well. So yeah, this is actually just a work in progress. It was blue, it was fucked. Uh, I've got to paint the front wheel because it's all rusty, stuff like that. So this is actually just a little side project I'm doing. It runs pretty well, just doesn't idle, it's idle hunting. So I have to pull the carb apart and make sure the idle circuit isn't clogged. It's predominantly just running off the mains at the moment. So as soon as it switches off from the main and goes to the idle circuit, it just it just falls over itself. So I've got to fix that. Um, but the good thing about it is the float holds and uh, we're not pissing out fuel everywhere. So hopefully I just got to fix that idle circuit and hopefully we can save that carb. And then yeah, this would be a pretty good deal of a bike. We're just gonna get a new rear tire for it. But um, yeah, it runs, it sounds really good. It's got a sports pipe on it. Yeah, shit like that. So this is stuff I love to tinker with. So let me know if you guys like stuff like this, like pit bikes or go-karts, and this is the shit I love, like little little small engine stuff. So you guys let me know if you like it. Now coming up to the back of the yard, so this is the, the Ford corner, we call this one. Now this is where actually my shed is gonna be going. So right where I'm standing here, all the way to that back wall, up the top is going to be my shed with uh, ho hoist and everything in there. So it'll come out all the way to here, here, and here. But I'll talk all about that when I do my uh, house tour video, which I'm still gonna be doing. Don't worry, I know a lot of you have been asking. I've been trying to get the house a bit more on a level where it's not, you know, derelict outside. So we've just been doing a lot of stuff to the front yard, stuff like that, so. Uh, so let's go, let's start with this thing here. So we bought this car here. This is a 1995 EF Falcon, just like the one outside, the green one, has a Fairmont front on it. And uh, this one we bought merely just to, just to make a bit of coin on it and show you guys how to just buy a cheap car and flip it and make some money on it. Literally, I've brought it, parked it up. It used to sit over there in that corner over there, but right now it's just chilling. <laughs> um, I haven't done anything with it. All I really have done is I've bought a few parts from 
auto parts store i bought new brakes for it new bonnet struts brand new battery for it stuff it really needed uh the mirror's fallen off on the driver's side so i've got to fix that we've got the au stockies on it and on this side which is the bad side we just got some wheels just to have a sitting on for now uh, i do have a set of four wheels over there two of them don't fit on the front because they're a later model ford wheel so I'm just going to make some wheels fit whatever fits on them. <laughs> but um, yeah, so plans for this, obviously, is just we're going to, in the next uh, couple of uh, videos, we're going to be cleaning it up, getting it nice and uh, prepared, and we're going to advertise it and see how much profit we can make. So the car owes us $300. I think right now it owes me about $500 with the new brakes, the struts, the battery, all that stuff. Put a lot of our labor and time into it to clean it up, paint a few things on it, clean the interior, uh, get the lifters a bit quieter. And yeah, it drives really nice. It actually is a decent car for what it is. I'd love to keep it. I'd rather someone else get some use out of it than, uh, than let it sit. This will be an awesome little series to show you guys, you know, what to do when you buy a crappy old car and you want to make a little bit of profit, you know, and, and obviously be re very realistic with it. Not going to put a stupid price on it. We'll sort of get with the market and um, and see how much we can make on top of our $300 purchase. So I'm excited for this one. I actually really am. Be interesting to see how this goes. Over here, we have the beast. Now, I only just brought this home the other day. Uh, I actually drove it home from my other house and yeah, did the 40 minute drive awesome with the new gearbox and uh, actually drove it around a bit more when it was down here because I put it on a re unregistered permit because yeah, it currently is unregistered. Um, funny story. I actually uh, pulled up next to a hire patrol and uh, it's that loud. He sort of looked at me and gave me the most horrid look. He just sort of looked at me and pointed, but they were in the middle of pulling over some uh, Honda Integra for speeding. So lucky they didn't pull me over, but I had a permit on it anyway, so they can get fucked, honestly. Plans with this, we actually entered Vic Drift for the 19th of Feb. So we're going to be doing the national circuits. That's a whole day event. So we're going to see how she goes. So currently she is pretty much ready to go. It's uh, mechanically pretty much A1 at the moment. So all I really need to do is uh, that front tire has got a bit of a puncture. So it lets down air after two days. So I'm just going to pull that off and I've got a puncture repair kit. Hopefully we can fix that. If not, we'll just run those rears on the front as steers. And yeah, it actually drives really well. I still had cruise control. So I used cruise control the whole way home on the freeway. So that was great. <laughs> that was fantastic. But yeah, we haven't really had much else to do to it. I haven't had time to do the hydraulic handbrake setup in it yet. So we're still just going to do the bit, the old left foot brake as you come in on the Scando. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll bring her out soon. Do a bit of a prep on it. A prep video of getting it ready for Vic Drift. Hopefully it uh, it does well. And uh, I really, I really have some high hopes for it now. Hopefully it's going to perform and yeah, obviously check the gearbox oil straight away. <laughs> That's the first thing I did before I drove it. And we're still full and there was no puddles under the car, so we're good. Now, the beast, the old Chungus, she's still alive. I actually was dailying her a couple weeks ago. Been driving her heaps, actually. She's been doing really well. Now, a lot of you have been asking, what are you going to be doing with this beast? This beast over here, beast. I've actually gone out and uh, and brought some, uh, not Raptor liner, but just bed liner, because I've got to read it. See, the flares are all fucked and the uh, the paint's just all gone. So when I painted this a, a while ago uh, for a video, I used just like an automotive um, plastic paint, but it just wasn't very good for like UV and, and it was probably good for like interior stuff, but not for outdoor. Uh, it was technically trim and bumper paint, but it just hasn't really lived up to, to the elements. So yeah, what I'm going to be doing is uh, we're going to be Raptor coating or bed lining all these plastics, uh, those rock sliders too. And that's pretty much it just to get it looking much nicer. Uh, in that video, I'm going to be explaining what we're going to be doing to it. But just in case people don't see this video, a lot of you have been asking me, what are, we, what are you going to be doing with this scenes that it had the rear end collision? So I had a rear end collision about a month or two ago, I think. I uh, got hit in the back by a mate. It was an accident. Replace the doors. The inside is a little bit still fucked up, but it still functions and does what it needs to do. 85% of you want me to chop it. If you've been following me for a long time, uh, you know that I'm not a huge fan on chops. I'm not a huge fan on utes. I've never really liked utes uh, as much as they're cool. I, 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 loved, I love watching a really well done ute, uh, you know, nice chopped uh, beast. For this car, I, I've always loved wagons. I love panels. It really just makes the car, you know, one whole thing. It's, it's weird. I just, I like panels. Uh, if anything, style side is pretty cool. Well, I've always been a wagon fanatic. Now, I'm not going to chop it. It's just, yeah, I just don't want to do that. And that's no offense to anyone that has a chopped car. I just, you know, not a fan of it myself. So what we're going to be doing with it is uh, a lot of you have suggested some good suggestions in the comments like bolting a plate to the inner hinge here that's caved in that way and actually just straightening it up so if we can get this whole re uh, jam straightened we can repaint it and just make it all nice uh the biggest pain in the ass is this quarter panel now most people i've talked to said you know you can repair this but you're gonna have to blend the whole quarter or you're gonna have to replace this quarter so it's a bit of an um and ah at the moment it drives it does what it needs to do all the brakes work after that collision so <laughs> um yeah for now it's just going to be a daily slash tow rig this is going to be towing that in a couple weeks to the track as it did last time it's the best tow car ever actually also over here sorry if the wind's a pain in the ass here it's like a funnel in here this is the rack that we haven't had on for ages so we're going to be putting this rack back on the car uh, we're going to be modifying it to do like a flat rack so we're going to be pretty much chopping the basket off uh before i do that if anyone has a flat rack and wants to trade for a full length basket 
I'll be happy to do that. Uh, this is an aluminium one, pretty light, and uh, it's got all the brackets and that. But if anyone has a flat rack full length and they want to swap for a basket, let me know. I'll be keen to swap. If not, we'll chop the top off this and make it look nice. And put it back on the car with the light bar back on the front. Nice and flushly mounted with the top of the snorkel. That way it doesn't smash my roof in the garage with the uh, with the big traps on it. We also got this King's awning here to put on the side. It should look all sick when it's all done. Yeah, don't worry about this Holden Adventurer. That's uh, that's classified information. So you're probably asking me, where's the VL, the RX-7 and the XR Falcon? So all three of them are still at my mum's place and we'll have a chat about them now. So. The VL, the RX-7, and the 68 XR. Now, I was going to drive down and, and film them individually, but I can't bother with the 40-minute drive because I have to go to work soon. So, I'll just explain what's going on now. A lot of you have been messaging me about the VL, so I'll start with that first. Now, the VL is a car that I really want to get done uh, very soon. So, the biggest reason I brought the AU Drift car home is so I can pull the VL out of its uh, little hidey hole that it's staying in now because I can't really work on it there. It's sort of off to the side next to a tree, so I haven't been able to do much to it. With me bringing the AU home, I can actually get it out and put it in the garage and have a spot next to the RX-7. It'll be away from the elements, I can work on it easy, I can push it out, do whatever I want to it. Now it did take me a while to get access to the rear of the house because there was a big drop off from my garage here to get low cars down. So I had to build up a bit of a bank and then some crushed rock to get cars out there that aren't the four wheel drive because only the four wheel drive could get out there before. So with the VL, I'm gonna get the mounts for it so I can start mounting the LS in there and get a T56 for it and then just start uh, fabricating any uh, cross members and any things we got to do for exhaust headers and stuff like that But I really want to get the engine mounted in there and then finish the brakes on it I just have to do the brake lines for the VY uh, caliper conversion and get that all sorted That way we can uh, make it nice a nice roller and then start doing all the bodywork on it Because the bodywork's going to take quite a long time and speaking of bodywork we have the RX-7 the FD So with the RX-7 right now I have all well, the boots full of just brand new stuff for it So I'm going to make a video on just explaining all the new parts we've got on it plus uh, what we're going to be doing next uh, But for now uh, I really that's the car I want to finish next so the rx7 is the car i want to have done next i'll probably do the vl in the meantime but i want that uh, rx7 done first because that's my dream car and i want to drive it <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 26 so i've had the car for i think two and a half years or three years now so i want to have the car driving and uh and then you know work towards my next dream car so i don't want to just leave it there and go hey i've got it and then not do it for 10 years so i've been buying parts for it i've been trying to find a radiator support for it because uh, obviously the front end's a bit kinked on it I can't find a rad support that isn't in Japan. So uh, if anyone knows of one, uh, please let me know. Anyone wrecking one? Uh, I've spoken to a few wreckers, but they don't want to part with the shell. They don't, they don't want to cut up a shell, which is fair enough. They're very expensive cars now. So in the meantime, we're going to get the whole body in primer, make it nice and straight, uh, get every uh, panel to line up well. Then we'll do the front, we'll put on a rack, straighten it up. As soon as it's straight, engine can go in. We'll paint the bay. Engine, gearbox can all sit in, and then we'll just start doing everything around it, all the wiring, some seats for it, stuff like that. And then hopefully when it fires up, uh, we can get it to a point where we'll just go and get it registered, put it on Clyde Bridge and drive the thing because I'm freaking hanging, guys. So the VL and the RX-7, very similar things we have to do to them, but the RX-7 is more of a factory-style build uh, versus the VL, which we're sort of putting engine conversion in. <coughs> so that leaves us to lucky last. Car number 12, 1968 XR Falcon. With the XR Falcon, I've always uh, dreamed of having just a nice bench seat car cruiser, uh, you know, a big 9-inch diff in it, a nice V8 up front. Maybe a bit of nitrous on it, who knows. That's the reason I got that car. Obviously it needs a lot of work. Uh, so we're gonna try and get some rust uh, repair started on that very soon. It's very rare for me to buy a car and not touch it for a few years like this car here. So once I actually start on it, I'll actually get a lot of motivation to continue with it. Obviously it's a lot of money and time, time being probably the worst because uh, with all these other cars, you know, rust repairs, body work, it's a lot of time. Doing everything else as well, it's, uh, it gets a bit hard. So I'm uh, a lot of people don't understand when I run this channel is I'm one person. I don't have any team that works for me. I don't have anyone that edits my videos. I don't have anyone that sort of does any scheduling. I don't script. I don't do anything. I just sort of wake up and choose what I want to do, uh, which I, I love that because it, it doesn't become a job in that aspect. So I love that. Same time, it does drag things out because uh, I'm one person. <laughs> you know, I do have friends come over and help me here and there, but at most of the time it's just myself. So I'm not going to carry on about that kind of stuff because we just we're here for the cars. I'll quickly go around on future plans, uh, what we're going to be doing. So uh, we're going to be doing a lot of track events and stuff like that. More four wheel driving. That's the biggest thing I want to do. I want to do lots more trips with the guys. A lot of the guys I used to go out with, they're not really into four wheel driving anymore, or they've just sort of, you know, stopped or they don't really want to go out anymore. So I'm trying to find a sort of a new group to go out with. It's been pretty hard because every time I want to go out, you know, not, not everyone's really keen anymore. So yeah, four wheel drive trips are probably the biggest. I really want to go out and uh, enjoy the patrol a lot more, uh, go away a bit further once I do a bigger fuel system on that car. With these cars behind me, uh, I want to do more track events. So uh, grip days, Sandown, Winton, uh, Broadford, Calder, anything. Uh, I want to do more grip racing, stuff like that with these cars, set them up properly uh, for the mountains. Do Maybe, maybe cover a bit of mountain run, stuff like that. Uh, 
A lot of you guys probably want to see that, yeah? With the skyline over there, maybe a few like minor drift days, nothing crazy, no tandems or anything. That'll be like full setup, drift, so straight. And who knows what we do in the future? Once it's turbo, we might maybe do a drag build, who knows? Um, obviously with the AU, that's just gonna be a full blown drift car. Hopefully one day maybe a comp car, depending if we keep it or not. The dailies, they're dailies. <laughs> the VL, uh, long term will probably end up being a uh, just a fast straight car, 1000 horsepower, that'll be the, the goal. And the XR being a probably a drag car, probably do a, a, a full drag build, but on the street. And the RX-7 will be just a single turbo Bridgeport rotary cruiser, which is every man's dream, <laughs> let's be honest. Well guys, I have talked enough in this video and I hate it when I talk too much because I hate hearing my own voice. I hope this gives you a little bit of an insight of what's happening and what's to be expected to come on this channel. I hope a lot of you haven't dropped off because uh, I've taken a bit of a break over the last few weeks. But at the same time, I'm so thankful and I respect everyone that has hung around and I remember all my, my viewers who comments and stuff like that and you're all great people and thank you so much for supporting me. We're gonna start some clothing and stickers very soon. I have been actually talking to some people and some designers trying to get some stuff out for you guys because I haven't really done anything <laughs> with that kind of stuff. So I really wanna get you know stickers on cars over you know halfway across the country, that'd be pretty cool. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging around, hanging out with me in the garage and we'll see you in the next video. So take it easy guys, ciao.